Okay, we're back now. Basically, we have finished the Calfian storyline and we left it overnight fishing. We can see we got our new pet from finishing the Calfian story, uh, a hawk. And uh, there's a fishing event going on right now. That's why you may be seeing a lot of people. Um, if you want to really min-max, the fishing event gives you these little fishes that uh, are worth 500,000 and they, they stack. So you, we got 28 overnight. I think the fishing rod that I just bought off the market for 900,000 um, lasted about four hours uh, with no actual fishing speed level increases or anything like that. It will last a lot less once we have a fishing level increase. Um, fishing level, just to go over that really quickly, um, you have attack speed, movement speed, critical hit rate, uh, fishing, gathering, and luck. These are levels. and uh, You can manipulate these with gear. And uh, luck is just by playing the game. Or in, and There's a cash shop item that helps you as well, but you don't even need that anymore. Once you get a fairy in the game, that should get you close to having a level 4 or 5 of luck. Luck increases your drop rate or general drop rate of all monsters across the world. Uh, gathering increases your gathering speed, so it takes less time. Um, to gather uh, goods. Fishing just takes less time to cast and uh, reel it in. Critical hits is just uh, the percentage chance to crit. Uh, a lot of classes tend to like this a lot. Um, some classes don't really need it because their skills already have a 100% crit rate. Uh, so it depends on the class. Movement speed will just increase your movement speed generally and uh, does affect some uh, movement abilities and attack speed for um, Archer specifically. And the rest of the classes that are listed under attack speed uh, increases your animation speed. And that's a very big thing. You always really want this at level five at least, or as close to level five as you can. Uh, some classes use cast speed. It's essentially the same thing. So uh, wizards and witches, for example, use cast speed instead of attack speed. Same thing though. And as you know, basically, we've done the Calfian storyline. Uh, but this event is very good. Uh, we, you can see we got a bunch of fishes. I'll show you what you can do with your fish uh, right here. There's an Imperial Fishing Delivery NPC. You can talk to him. He will buy your blue and yellow fish for a decent price. You can sell all of them. If it's not been already, um, it's per server, so there's already uh, a set amount that he will take per channel, and then you have to wait for the reset. The reset is every three hours, uh, so it's not too bad. You can swap channels to get it, but um, it's a decent uh, idea to just sell the, the fish that you can to him, and then the rest you can sell it to any trade manager. You don't have to connect nodes or anything like that. If you fish out in the ocean, uh, you can sell that fish anywhere without having to, get, to connect the nodes. Uh, nodes really quickly. I don't think I've gone over this yet, but these are nodes. Um, this is a town node. This is a worker node. Logia Farm, for example, if you go into here, you'll see the actual worker node available to you, potato, potato farming. You can assign a worker to work this node in every few cycles or like every 40 minutes, I believe it's this one. You'll get a batch of potatoes. Uh, to your storage or whatever, wherever that worker is working. Uh, currently, nodes just received a change on PC. I'm not sure if this is the same on console, so uh, keep that in mind. But on PC, nodes are generally not as good as they used to be in terms of what you're getting. Um, they're still good to have in general. So we will be getting the green nodes, so potatoes and the uh, chicken and uh, potato nodes here. But that's pretty much it. I'm not really too invested into worker nodes. I don't think they're really worth... Uh, the time investment nowadays. Uh, there's just other options that you can do with your CP and one of those things is what we did with our CP is rented a helmet. You can do this in Calfian with the uh, armor NPC. He will rent you a helmet uh, that's decent. So it's, it's about plus 14, plus 15 equivalent of a green piece armor. Uh, with For 50 CP you can uh, rent one of these or also rent a weapon if you wish. Just wanted a little bit more DP as we went through. We have 161 DP now. That's plenty for where we are in the game at the moment. Uh, just for completing the Calfian storyline and hitting level 50, we also received a lot more quests from the Black Spirit. So again, just talk to your Black Spirit and accept every quest he has available for you. 
Uh, Exalted character and world of knowledge quests are essentially helping you reach the next uh, energy brackets or contribution point brackets. So once you get that, you get a little bit of money. It's not really a big deal. You don't really have to think about it. You'll get there naturally. A new adventure uh, quest. This is if in your region or your own console you have Dregan region. Uh, this will be a quest that sends you to an NPC that gives you three banners and you just go and uh, right click on these banners and they send you to these different locations as viewpoints and they'll give you some good uh, treasure chests that will open up for some goodies that you can sell for money. Uh, six steps for personal growth quest line is just for leveling. So once we hit 51, we'll get some black stones. Once we hit 52, it's the same thing all the way up to 55 or 56, I believe. Mysterious request um, is part of the ocean quest line. I haven't really done this. Um, they do push the ocean quest line quite early for me. Um, I've already started doing it here. As you can see, if you go to main on the quest tab, you can see all the qu main quests available to you, all the quest lines. And we started the Great Expedition Okilla's Eye. This is the ocean um, quest line that will give you, I believe, Jared's support specifically gives you a ship. Uh, it's a very, you know, shoddy ship. It's not great, but it's good enough to get you started. If you want to uh, explore the ocean and the seas, you can just do this quest line really quickly and uh, get that ship and then continue the quest line as you will. It's a uh, pretty interesting. I'm not really, we're not going to continue this right now just because it does give us XP and I want to save all the XP quests for us to go to 61. So we're not really going to do that. We're going to go instead to Hex Sanctuary, hit 51 really quickly. And Hex Sanctuary is here, the skeletons. We were here through the main story. Um, you could stay here. You're probably 51 by now, um, but I just focused mainly on main story. Didn't really dilly-dally too much. But here, it's a decent money uh, per hour place for low AP. Uh, just because of the witch earring that drops here, it drops fairly often in my experience. And the mobs do drop heave helmets, which also sell for close to a million. They drop, they drop relics, which sell for at least a million. Uh, so a, a lot of good stuff. If you don't have a lot of AP, you can go here. It is very crowded on Olvia channels, but if it's on the weekend and you really want XP as well, you can go on any other channel. If you're not sure how to switch channels, on the top right here, you can just click on Olvia 1 and you can see all the different channels. It's the same server but they call it server changes, different servers, but it's really the same world and you can go anywhere you want. Uh, specifically, you can go into the Olvia ones and um, maintain the Olvia uh, sort of beginner status, which just gives you XP during normal days. But on the weekend, everyone's getting the same bonus. So you can go into any server or channel that you wish. Arsha PvP channel is specifically for if you're looking for some PvP fights. It does have a bonus drop rate but I don't recommend you going anywhere near here uh, until you get uh, much higher in gear score because you will get completely annihilated. There are no uh, negative consequences for killing players on Arsha channels. Um, so it's a good, I think it's a good idea to go there if you're thinking about PvP in the, in the long run once you get a little bit more gear because not everyone on Arsha is extra, extremely strong. Uh, there are some potatoes over there as I like to say. So you have a you have a chance really, but for the most part, don't go here for now. Uh, there's another thing I should mention that um, will be beneficial to you if you're also into PvP. So I want to go over it really quickly. Red Battlefield. Once you, I believe once we hit 50, we can go in here. Yeah, any explorer of level 50 and above can freely enter. So Velia 4 server channel is the primary channel for everyone doing Red Battlefield. That's where. Most channels will have uh, actual people doing it. Right now, everyone's asleep, so no one's doing it right now. But during the normal hours of Europe time and prime time, you'll see uh, upwards of 50, 60 people doing Red Battlefield. And you can go in here with your character. I don't recommend you actually do this as a, as a, a new player. Uh, I'll show you what you want to do. Let's go to character selection really quickly. So I can show you where you can make a sort of PvP character specifically for testing out uh, classes and stuff. So if you see here, we have standard and we have trial. I made a trial already. You can create any class. You have three slots available to you and it will start at level 60. 
and we go into this uh, trial character trial archer that I made it logs you in to the battle arena which is a sort of PvP practice area you can practice with your friends or random people and also with dummies so you see a couple people here there's some dummies here there's also some uh, M NPC mobs that you can fight as well to practice combos and then once you leave this little area you can you can go out here and uh, practice with real people uh, PvP mode will be enabled and uh, you can freely practice so what this does it allows you to unlock all your skills check out how the g class gives you free gear and um, basically close to soft cap gear and gives you uh, as many potions and stuff as you need and you are able to practice this class PvP as much as you want. You can also go into Red Battlefield, the PvP mode, with this character. So you don't need to actually use your own character. Every win you get will give you some money. And every loss will also give you a little bit of money as well. And some seals, which you can then uh, use to, to make some more money in the long run. Everything you get from the PvP mode will be sent to your Black Spirit safe. So you don't actually have to worry about this character um, because you can actually transfer anything from this character to your actual uh, account or your actual um, uh, main character. So you don't have to worry about this character getting all the money from the uh, Red Battlefield and not being able to get it. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much... I wanted to talk about Red Battlefield really quickly. That's... I, I do recommend it if you're into PvP in this game to get used to it. Um, everyone in Red Battlefield on Primetime is very strong. And if so if you're new, it may be overwhelming if you have no practice whatsoever. But honestly, it's not too bad once you get used to it and once you get used to kind of like the style of how RBF works. Uh, some people like it, some people hate it. So it really is up to you. I don't mind it too much. I kind of like going at least once a day because if you go and log in, and you go into RBF with your main character, there is a quest that you can take every day that is just basically win one match or lose five matches of RBF. Once you satisfy that with your trial character, you can pick it up with your normal character and then go into the actual fight with your trial character. And then once you complete that quest, you go to your main character and complete it and you get 200 energy back. So if you are above 200 energy, we don't have enough, obviously. But uh, you're gathering, for example, you're at zero energy, and energy is just recovering really slowly. You can do RBF solely for that. You got some seals, and you get 200 energy back. Very good for life skillers and profession people. All right, let's go back to our main character. And then we're going to go over exactly. So we said we're going to go to Hex Sanctuary to just level up quickly. That's also a good zone for you to grind some money right now with this event though if you really want to min max if you like fishing a lot uh, just fishing for that uh, event fish is the way to go I mean uh, we have about a week and a half left but I don't want to just focus on that because I want this series to be um, something that everyone after this event is over this event is going to last forever right uh, that they can they can follow so as you saw we haven't really bought anything we just still bought this uh, the only uh, item we've bought is the Laverto plus 15. Uh, we have enhanced this uh, Bastier from the quest line plus 7. That's as high as it goes, so you, you never fail this, just for a little bit more AP. And you can see that we've, we received 40 million gold bars, or 40 million silver and gold bars, from just finishing the Calafian storyline. That's a lot of money. It's very good. It helps you just buy armor, and a lot of black stones were given as well. So... And, uh, and also a tier 5 horse. I believe they give you two for whatever reason. So I, I, we've already received one, and this is another one that they give you. Uh, and some food. I want to go over food really quickly as well. Food uh, can be used every 30 minutes. Um, some stack and some don't. So different types will, uh, will stack if their effects are different, for example. Um, this type of fluffy milk bread thing that you get from questing, it's just to help you increase your uh, health meter. So your health, strength, and breath. Breath is just from running around. I do recommend you just run around everywhere uh, just to increase this because this will increase your stamina the higher it goes. Uh, the soft cap is level 30. Past that, it's a lot harder to get levels, but you don't have to worry about I believe the max is level 50, uh, but don't worry too much about it. You'll naturally get to level 30 
just by running around the world. Strength uh, gives you a little bit more weight capacity. Not really worth doing, to be honest. Uh, the cap the capacity you get is not make or break, to be uh, to be honest. Health gives you more HP and MP, and you get this from uh, usually f uh, the quest food that they give you. You see it went up a little bit, or normal food. So if we want to use normal food here, like calcium meal, we'll use that, and it goes up again, and we get the buffs down here. And it lasts, uh, it tells you how long it lasts, 90 minutes for this one, and what it gives you HP, the recovery, and damage reduction. Um, right, so what do we want to do? Oh, need to go over this really quickly. So you see this little summon scroll piece here? If you summon your black spirit, every day, once you hit uh, level 50 or so, or you're in Calfian storyline, you're finished the Calfian storyline, you can start taking these daily summon scrolls. Okay, uh, they're in recurring. There's dailies and weekly ones that you can take. So the weekly ones, if you don't have knowledge for the boss, um, usually throughout the storyline you'll get knowledge. So we got knowledge on Beg, Gaieth, and uh, Red Nose. So we can choose any of these and automatically receive the summon scroll. Otherwise, if you don't have the knowledge, you can uh, take a quest, kill some monsters, and then they'll give you the knowledge. And from then on, you never have to repeat the kill quest again. It's automatically going to give you the summon scroll. One thing to note, though, depending on whether or not you have this, I'm not sure if console players have this, but the quest reward will give you one of two options. One is a sort of red altar imp scroll, for example, and the other one is a, a green uh, piece, a scroll piece. So the green one you take if you want the harder version of the monster and you uh, take five of them and make one scroll. Usually I recommend you take the green piece just because you get a lot more black stones and you can party up with someone else to do this. You can't do this solo, uh, especially not early on. You want to do a party. Um, so if you join a guild or if you ask on find party, you will find people that need to do these anyway. So you'll you'll find someone to to do these scrolls with and help you out. So we're going to take the uh, awakened piece. Say accept. It says auto uh, or auto completed. We go back, we take the uh the green piece. We say okay. And you can see that we also have the weekly that we haven't done yet. So we're going to do a scheme under the monastery just for the dim tree. The dim tree is the one that you really want to get. I recommend getting bags and dim tree as the ones that you get early on just because those are, more, are the more valuable ones because uh, uh, they do drop boss gear from time to time. You know, uh, I've never gotten a uh, or received a Dim Tree drop in three years of play, but I have received a bunch of uh, bag drops, obviously, uh, in a lot of years of play. So it really depends on your RNG, really. But it's good for Blackstones mainly. That's why you do them. You get a bunch of Blackstones just for doing this, and it's really worth for, for just that. Speaking of Blackstones, Blackstones are used for enhancing. We're going to do a little bit of enhancing right now. I want to go over a, a quick thing. So in terms of gear, accessories don't matter right now. Just use what they give you. We don't even have a belt right now. It's fine. Don't worry about it. When we get to Medaya region, we start getting Asula accessories, and that's going to hold us over for a while until we eventually move on to the yellow accessories that we want. But uh, Asula in Medaya will be enough. We'll go over that once I, I get in there in Medaya and, and get the pieces. But for the rest of the gear, we can start upgrading uh, the armor. So in terms of the helmet, uh, we have the quest armor, which will uh, be good enough for, for now. In terms of gloves, doesn't really matter what you get, to be honest. Um, you really want to get a Beg's gloves, which is the boss gear. That's like the best boss gear you can get early on here. They cost about 100 mil at base, but um, always try and buy your boss gear at Pry if you can. It's 500 mil or even eh, maybe five, yeah, 450 or so, 460 at Pry. Uh, it's a lot of money, but it's definitely worth it for what you get out of this, uh, this piece. In terms of what we want for the rest right now, uh, Heave will be great, but Heave is expensive. It's max priced at 695k. If you go over to Velia, to the blacksmith, and you go to his shop, you can go down here, um, and you have a Fortuna helmet, which is similar. Um, I believe Ornella has a similar uh, price, so it's 554k, 
for uh, Heave Helmet for Ornella. So Ornella is in Heidel over here. She's the blacksmith in Heidel. There's two blacksmiths, actually. But she's right here. Uh, so she, I believe, will have the Heave Helmet for 554k. Uh, it's still expensive, but it's not bad. The Heave Helmet will actually be the helmet you use for the rest of the game. There's Even boss helmets are not as good as the Heave Helmet, just in terms of raw stats. So I do recommend you... Uh, go for the heave helmet early and I don't recommend just buying a pry you can make it plus 15 fairly easily these green pieces um, I do recommend also if you're going to be buying something don't always buy it base just because this is 43,000 silver uh, and this is close to a million think about the value of the blackstone so this is worth 885 right now a plus six this is six black stones, basically. This is what it takes to go from base to this. So six black stones is about 1.2 million. If you look at black stone prices right now for armor, they're close to max. That's 1.2 mil or more. That means you should just buy the heave boots at plus six to save a little bit of money. And it's stuff like this that you want to think about when you uh, when you look at the market. Let's put some money in the market again, actually, because I haven't done anything. Uh, let's deposit some stuff. We have some stuff as well, just from drops. Uh, these relics you want to keep. I do uh, recommend running them over actually selling them. Just because the memory fragments you get for them are usually always worth more than if you sell the relic. <clears throat> so I do recommend just uh, keeping these stored in here. If you don't have an inventory or, or storage. You can actually put these and stack them in here. They don't weigh anything, so using a warehouse as kind of storage is a good idea. So let's go to, uh, we sold some stuff, but uh, let's go to that heave shoe again. This is just uh, temporary. You don't want to spend too much money, so if you can save as much money as possible, uh, you want to do so. So the heave, we bought that. We're going to buy uh, the heave helmet in Heidel, of course. Um... And I think for the gloves, it doesn't really matter what we choose. But again, we can choose to buy a plus six if we wish for uh, cheaper than what it actually costs. So we can do that as well. So just buy that. And there we go. What's uh, pretty much it. In terms of sub weapon, I believe we bought a plus eight AP offhand. The AP offhand is usually the one you want to go for. Let's also convert these uh, gold bars really quickly into money. That's a lot of money just for doing a, a story quest. Not bad. Put that money in uh, the warehouse. So we have a plus eight. Um, we can probably push that. The reason I'm not using it right now, this is how you get stuff from the market, by the way. It's just the same concept. The reason I'm not... Um, using here we go we just uh, use this uh asula right so we're gonna get asula we're gonna go to hex medaya uh, and then eventually once we hit 61 or 60 even we'll start focusing more on the fishing event to get a little bit more money to help us get uh, uh more upgrades but uh for now i believe that is all I really wanted to go over, I'm trying to remember if there is one thing in particular. I guess feeding your pets, you can see our, our pets are starving right now. You need feed for that. A good feed is something you can cook or buy off the market. Um, it's fairly easy to cook, to be honest. You can buy cheap feed, which is the same thing. It's just a little cheaper option for you from any stable keeper. Um, it will, you'll need, I think, about 170 of them to completely replenish five starved pets. You don't need that many, but if you want, you can go on your pet uh, little bar here, say feed all, choose the type of feed you want, and then hit confirm, or you can just right click and it will uh, feed the lowest pet first. And as you feed them, your pets level up. Once I hit level 10, they'll learn, learn a skill. The skill is usually like combat XP plus 5% or gathering XP plus 5%, something like that. If you get, you can kind of get lucky sometimes and get maybe like gathering level plus one. 
uh, which remember the gathering level is this, a faster gathering. There is a max, you can't go above five, so going above five makes no sense. It won't do anything. Uh, there's one, the best one for me, honestly, is luck plus one. Uh, it's just really hard to get luck sometimes, so that would be, that'd be good. And that's pretty much all I really wanted to go over in terms of where we are right now and what you th should be thinking about in the game, we got some gear from the market. We saved a little bit of money by buying it already enhanced. That tends to be how it goes at, at higher levels, even honestly, depending on your RNG. Uh, we're keeping our quest armor just because it's good and it will get better uh, over time. We have this rent uh, helmet, which we'll do away with once we get the uh, normal helmet. Um, well, I'll do enhancing really quickly just to show you what it's like. And. Um, Let's go to enhancing here. Let's unequip our items first. Let's go with the boots. You can uh, right click the black stone to go in straight into enhancing. So here we go. Uh, it will tell you the percentage. 51% chance for it to go up at zero fail stacks. Uh, every time you fail, your fail stacks go up. And the higher your fail stacks, the higher like bonus chance you have to succeed an item. So right now, zero fail stacks is fine. You can force enhance stuff like this. I don't recommend that. Really not necessary whatsoever. Um, you can just click enhancement. You can skip the animation if you want, if you don't want. Uh, click the enhancement, and then there you go, plus seven. That's basically how it goes. If you get to this point on plus seven, you saw we have now options like this, uh, force enhance which I don't recommend, uh, durability and enhance. So if you want higher percentage rates on green gear, you wanna stay in enhance mode. If you want to preserve durability and make fail stacks, which is something you do later on to fail on purpose to get a better bonus chance for something that you actually want to enhance. Sounds weird, but we'll go over that probably in the next one. Um, you can see the difference in, in percentage rates here, 17 and, and 34. This only works for green gear. And the difference is that if we fail this attempt, we'll lose five durability out of 100 on this item. And if it's durability, we only lose four. So that's the only difference to really, to, to be honest. I say, if you're starting out, this is our gear. We want the enhance option and just try and get as much as we can. And with that, th we're done with this episode. Um, I'll get back to you guys when we get to the next stage of our progression. And as always, if you have any questions whatsoever and you want me to cover something I didn't cover in any of these episodes so far, let me know. I'll cover it in the next one as soon as I see it. And that way we can uh, kind of flesh out. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to think about every question I've been asked in my th two years of uh, YouTube so that you guys don't really have any questions left to ask but if anything if i missed anything just let me know and as always thanks for watching guys thanks for listening i'll see you guys in the next one take care